almost everything is wrong with the finance sector and also almost everything is wrong in the way we're trying to address the problem. Uh, the financial sector is uh, grotesquely large, it's unstable, it's short-termist and it's exploitative. I think we have to go back to the lessons of history, the periods when we have not had financial crises and we had financial systems that were smaller, uh, less complex, less opaque than now, and they were uh, also very well regulated, very tightly regulated. And we need to have the courage to implement this kind of regulation and to reduce the size of the financial sector in those parts that are socially useless. History shows that credit guidance is the most efficient way to regulate banks. We have very complex bank regulation and there's many bank regulatory agencies on a national level, on the European level, international level. There's, there's no dearth of bank regulators. Trouble is they're all focusing on the wrong thing and complex regulations that have not worked, that have not prevented crises. Actually what we need is something very simple and that can be done through credit guidance, very transparent and accountable, um, where you have quantity quotas and restrictions for harmful stuff and you have also qualitative guidance for sectors that you want to receive the money. Debt that pays itself off is good debt um, and then debt that can't possibly generate any income or wealth for anybody except the fleet of foot uh, is not good debt. I mean, purely financial debt allows those speculators who, who operate very fast to benefit at the expense of those who are a bit slow. It was precisely the unrestrained speculation, the, the creation of, of derivatives, the, the complexity of the system as a whole and the fact that it was built on an investing essentially in, in undermining the long-term assets of, of people and resources. These were the problems that led to the financial crisis. We will need to limit the mobility of finance because it's the mobility of finance that creates volatility and instability, which means that a banker feels, well, he can make more by lending to the Brazilians than by lending to the Brits. The second big topic, if we don't want it to happen again, is to decide once and for all who will take the losses if and when a bank defaults. You know, what's going to happen if a bank defaults? Who will take the losses? Once the equity has been wiped out, who takes the losses? If they're smaller, they're easier to um, resolve if there is an issue, so we're not going to build in nearly so much systemic risk. Um, and certainly, from our perspective, part of what we want to deliver is a, a big old bank in a box platform with hundreds of little banks on it, which in and of itself will become systemically risky. So we are already talking with the regulator and, and we'll be doing special monitoring and get some pre-alerts and warnings in there. Any system that is reliant on only one type of entity in it, if you think of ecological systems, if we only had one sort of tree and there was a disease for that tree, the whole system comes down. The same is true of financial systems. And if you don't have a diversity of institutions, then it's not a very stable system.